This Week at NASA. Technicians at the Kennedy Space Center continue pre-launch preparations on Space Shuttle Discovery. STS-119 is slated to begin no earlier than February 27th with an early morning liftoff. Commander Lee Archambault's crew will help finish construction of the International Space Station's structural backbone. Among the 119 crew is Mission Specialist John Phillips, who will make his first return to the ISS since spending six months there in 2005 as a member of the Expedition 11 crew. The station is way bigger, it's much more capable, and um, it, to me it'll be, uh, it'll be very exciting. It'll be like visiting a new place in a way. And yet at the same time, there'll be some, some places that are very old and comforting to me that I've seen before. Astronomers using NASA's SWIFT satellite and Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope are seeing frequent blasts from a rare spinning neutron star 30,000 light years away. SGRJ 1550-5418, as it's officially cataloged, is actually the super dense city-sized remains of an exploded star called a soft gamma ray repeater. Over the past two years, astronomers have tracked it, randomly emitting a series of X-ray and gamma ray flares. This repeater, only the sixth known to exist, lies in the southern constellation Norma. It should help scientists understand how energy is unleashed by a neutron star's intense magnetic field, or magnetar. NASA's Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer, located on the Aqua satellite, captured this image of the deadly bushfires in southeast Australia. Aqua sensors use visible near-infrared and shortwave infrared light applying false color to better illustrate affected areas. Active fires are outlined in red, burned areas are brick red, and places of intense heat glow pink. The smoke, drifting as far east as New Zealand, is a transparent blue. The deadly fires have been called the worst disaster of its kind in Australia's history. I would encourage you to think today about what you're really passionate about and what you're really good at. In other words, what kind of things can you not wait to do when you get spare time? About 250 eighth grade students participated in hands-on science and engineering during the Bonmeyer Math and Science Odyssey at Antelope Valley College in Lancaster, California. Under the theme Soaring to New Heights, students explored controlled flight with a self-designed glider and spoke by radio with a NASA pilot and flight test engineer in an F-18. NASA 852, this is NASA Odyssey. Odyssey, this is NASA 852, go ahead. What does best glide speed mean? Best glide speed, that's when you, uh, you optimize lift against your drag, and it's when you can go the furthest. They also participated in workshops highlighting engineering, meteorology, physics, chemistry, and mathematics. <laughs> Named for the late Marta Bonmeyer, former pilot and chief engineer at the Dryden Flight Research Center. The annual event promotes study and career interest in math, science, and technology. NASA and Google Earth are now bringing to everyone's desktop high-resolution, three-dimensional views of Mars. With the advent of a new Mars mode in Google Earth, users can now travel the surface of the red planet flying through enormous ancient canyons, or viewing Martian dust devils firsthand. They can also see the latest satellite imagery from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and learn about its latest discoveries. It's been 32 years since NASA's first shuttle orbiter, Enterprise, made its first flight, an approach and landing test at the Dryden Flight Research Facility. Originally to be named Constitution in honor of America's bicentennial, the shuttle prototype was christened Enterprise after the Star Trek Starship, following a massive write-in campaign by fans of the popular TV program. From 1977 through 1979, Enterprise was put through 12 more tests at Triton, the Marshall Space Flight Center, and the Kennedy Space Center. As a prototype, Enterprise was never meant to fly in space but some of its parts were refurbished and used on the five orbiters that did. In 1985, Enterprise became the property of the Smithsonian Institution. It's currently on display at the National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udbarhazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia.
And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.